resurrection, restoration, the year of restoration. Joel chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 25. Joel chapter 2, verse 25. And I will restore unto you the years that the locusts have eaten, and the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty. And be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God and that as that has dealt wondrously with you and my people and my people and my people shall never be a sheep number one is a year of rest Number two is a year of return and reunion. Number three is a year of restoration. Number four is a year of redemption. We're coming back to Leviticus chapter 25. It's a year of redemption. You're looking at chapter 25, verse 24. Leviticus chapter 25. And there we're reading from verse 24. What kind of year is this year of jubilee? Redemption total redemption full redemption verse 24 and in all the feet in all the land of your possession ye shall grant a redemption for the land a redemption for the land it's telling us that this special year this 50th year the year of jubilee is a year of redemption and that's what jesus came to establish in our lives he came to grant us redemption Redemption from everything that oppressed our lives. Redemption from sin. Redemption from sickness. Redemption from the curse of the law. And there's no cause in your life anymore. Anybody now? Anybody trying to curse anyone in Israel in the year of Jubilee's wasting time? Because no curse ever holds value in the day and in the year of jubilee and this is our year of jubilee and anybody trying to curse you they don't understand that you are set free eternally free in jesus name romans chapter 3 verse 24 redemption 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 for the people in the year of jubilee in romans chapter 3 verse 24 being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in christ jesus he is a redeemer and he is the one that came to establish the fullness of the proclamation of the year of jubilee in our lives and it grants us redemption hebrews chapter 9 i'm reading there from verse 12 and verse 14 hebrews chapter 9 neither verse 12 neither by the blood of goats and cows but by some blood he entered in once into the holy place having obtained one day redemption having obtained temporary redemption what did he obtain eternal redemption for us that's what I'm saying. I'm telling you from the word of God. The moment you enter into that year of Jubilee and you accept it, it's a year of rest. It's a year of return and reunion. It's a year of restoration. And it's a year of redemption. And he tells us here that he obtained, he got it for you. He obtained it for you. Eternal redemption for every child of God. In verse 14, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Now he has redeemed us so that we will serve the Lord. Number one, rest. Number two, return and reunion. Number three, restoration. Number four, redemption. Number five, it's a year of relief. A year of relief. All the heavy weight on your shoulders, all the burden in your heart, all the mountain at your back, all the things that will not make your neck to be free because it's like you're carrying a heavy load and all the things that drag you are dragging your feet because there is bondage in the year of jubilee it's a year of relief you'll be relieved from every pain 
every problem, every anxiety, every burden, because the year of relief has come. It has come for me. I said it came for me. All mountains gone because you came to experience the freedom of jubilee coming upon your life we are looking at now leviticus chapter 25 verse 35 verse 35 relief 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 chapter 25 verse 35 and if thy brother be waxing poor and falling in decay we see then thou shalt relieve him relieve him it's the year of jubilee oh you give a helping hand a lifting hand those who are falling lift them up those who are discouraged encourage them and those who are bound with any yoke break the yoke for them and set them free and set them loose it says thou shall relieve them yea thou shall be though you be a stranger or a sojourner that she may live with thee our relief has come in Psalm 146. Psalm 146. This is what the Lord does for us now. As we look up to the Lord and you come to the Lord today because our jubilee has begun and it is a year of relief. We're looking at Psalm 146 for 7. 146 for 7, which executed judgment for the oppressed which giveth food to the hungry the lord loses the prisoners you're imprisoned in captivity held on by anybody all those chains are broken all the fetters are broken and all the restriction and restraint the people try to cage you capture you and put you in captivity all the prison doors are open today and you know spending your money on things that you know it's like they, every time you get the money they want you to put it on sickness on sickness is the captivity of sickness but thank god today you are here just because you are here you don't have to do anything because the year of jubilee people are not even oh god restore me oh god deliver me once jubilee comes the automatic freedom comes upon them and since you are here today automatic relief automatic deliverance it comes in jesus name and so it says in verse 8 the lord openeth the eyes of the blind that's jubilee time you know people who are blind they come or they come to this meeting they come to this place in the year of jubilee when we're celebrating their eyes just got open and the people that have never seen any good in their lives and their everything is dark but in the year of jubilee a vision become brightened in jesus name the lord raises them that are bowed down the lord loves the righteous the lord preserves the strangers he relieves the fatherless and the widow he relieves them that's the relief we're talking about is a year of relief number six is a year of reckoning the year of reckoning that's what reckoning means accounting that means the lord is saying he's looking at everything you should have got the will the property the thing that was left for you but you didn't know and the lord begins to take record accounting and he says ah, why is this one sitting in the bank over here when so and so is the owner and then they write to you they say do you know that you have some money in the account we have been doing some reckoning i will find your name somebody left you something very big come on here and come with your identity and come and claim what belongs to you and this year will be your year of reckoning every good thing that is reckoned to your account that you have never claimed is a year to claim everything you claim your inheritance and claim your property you reckon it it is mine and it is going to be yours i said it's going to be yours now, now you, you understand the year of jubilee people they change their clothes they change their style they change their outlook because it's a year for celebration it's not a year to be you know looking down bound and oppressed and a year of scarcity and a year when they don't have ulcers are gone in the year of jubilee famine is gone in the year of jubilee hunger is gone in the year of jubilee unemployment is gone in the year of jubilee 
because it's a year of reckoning for you praise the lord i said praise the lord leviticus chapter 25 i'm reading from verse 15 verse 15 now it says and he shall reckon with him that bought him from the year that he was sold unto to him unto the year of jubilee he will reckon it unto the year of jubilee if somebody had been in bondage and now he knows it's the 40th year he'll be reckoning ha ha my time is coming he'll be reckoning only 12 months more one year more only six months more because the year of jubilee is coming and he just knows that once the year of jubilee gets here nobody can hold me down anymore that's how they were reckoning it in israel and the lord said it's going to be a time of reckoning and while i'm talking i want you to begin to reckon that the message will soon finish and the prayer will soon come you are reckoning my my time it remains about 30 minutes i'm reckoning my healing has come i'm reckoning my deliverance has come i'm reckoning my wife has come i'm reckoning my husband has come keep on reckoning it is that reckoning that the moment you step into that moment of jubilee everything is done i said everything is done look at romans chapter 4 romans chapter 4 reckoning reckon it done reckon it that god has said this is it because it's a year of jubilee the year of reckoning romans chapter 4 i'm reading there from verse 7 saying blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Commence this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision also. For we say that faith was what? Tell me out loud. Reckoned to Abraham for righteousness think about that somebody who had been a sinner before when the year of jubilee comes your sin is taken away and the righteousness of christ is reckoned unto you you said i was not righteous god says i can't see that because now the righteousness of christ is reckoned unto you how about all my sins we can't find them God has removed all your sins and he put them in the depths of the sea never to come up against your life anymore. All that God can see in the book of reckoning is now that you came to Christ and Christ came to you and the righteousness of Christ is now reckoned unto you. I said praise the Lord. Look at verse 10. How then was it reckoned when he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision but in on circumcision number seven is the year of release this that we're talking about the year of jubilee is the year of release we're looking at leviticus again leviticus chapter 25 verse 54 and verse 55 and he and if he be not redeemed in these years that is in the previous years then it shall go out in the year of jubilee both he and his children with him for unto me the children of israel are servants they are my servants at they are my servants whom i have brought out forth out from the land of egypt i am the lord your god I am the Lord your God because this is the year that the Lord says I'm redeeming them I'm releasing them I'm setting them free and this will be that year for you in Jesus name give me a good good amen and so the Lord said I redeem them I release them as you look at Matthew chapter 27 Matthew chapter 27 I read from verse 17, Matthew 27, verse 17. It tells us about the Lord Jesus Christ and another one, a criminal, a sinner, a notorious fellow. His name 
you find it here, Barabbas. It says in verse 17, Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will I, whom will ye, that I release unto you? Barabbas, or Jesus, which is called the Christ. Well, Pilate did not understand that Jesus Christ actually came to set the prisoners free. And he came to release the people that have been in bondage. And he came to take our place. He was our savior and substitute. And so Pilate said, here is the man Barabbas a sinner. Barabbas a notorious criminal. Who do I release? Do I release Christ? They didn't understand. Just like Caiaphas did not understand that there's no way you can release Jesus because he's the substitute. He's going to take the place of the other man. You will release Barabbas because in God's own accounting, Jesus Christ was to take the place of the sinner. Look at verse 20. And But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. Kill Jesus. Why? Because when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. He is the one to bear the punishment on the Lord and to bear all that Barabbas was to carry. Look at verse 21. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Verse 26, Then released he Barabbas unto them. And when he had scorched Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. You know, many people say, but that's not fair. That's not fair. Well, that's what Jesus came to do. He came to give his life.